morning. I want to talk to you today. Last time I was speaking, I was talking about the baptism of death. Actually, that's not a very bad thing. It's an awesome thing once you learn how to get in there with the Lord and do this. It's incredible what he can do. Um, it's, it's just amazing. But I want to talk to you about the other side of this equation, uh, the, the faith side. Say faith side. And I want to give you some... Uh, revelation today on things the Lord has been teaching us concerning faith. A lot of people, if you ask most people, do you walk by faith? They say, of course I walk by faith. But faith is a very, even with all of the faith teaching that goes along, is a very misunderstood, I would say, operation. There's different levels and different operations of faith. In the early days, when I didn't know anything about what we're doing now, what I'm being talking about today, I strictly was a confession guy. It's the confession. We built this church on confession. A lot of you don't understand where all this revelation comes from. The first two years of this church, all we did was confess that Framing Your World Manual. Four times a day we would confess that sometime for two years running on wisdom. We would speak and speak and speak. We moved mountains of poverty just speaking, never moving in to the jurisdiction of God, just standing there in raw faith in this jurisdiction and speaking God's word. And you can move mountains like that. You know, the power is in your tongue, but it's not the easiest way and the most effective way to do it. There's another way to do this. And this is the way I want to talk to you about today. I'm actually going to talk to you about three or four different levels today and operations, but how to shift things in, in the spirit by faith. So I'm going to begin with uh, Matthew 6, if you'll go over there. Matthew 6, verse 22. There's a, there's a lot of different things you can utilize faith for. Anna and I utilize faith for two major operations. And they go alongside of keeping his word. First major operation is the word of union. Tina was preaching about that. Get your branch up into that vine, praise God. And the word of union that keeps you there, that locks you in there, so you don't be plugged in and unplugged, plugged in and unplugged. The word of union will literally lock you in. And we keep our faith in that area constantly. We do it every day. And when you do it every day, like Cody was telling me, because, you know, this is kind of easy. And I said, don't say that to everybody. That's our little secret, you know, but it is. The, what makes it easy is you have to do it every day. You can't lose it because if you get out of alignment and you try to plug back in, it's hard. And if you wait to plug back in once you've gotten out of alignment, that's very hard to do because there's a lot of things that convolute. Amen. And the other thing that we give our faith for is the word of promise. Say word of union. Word of promise. Word of union. Word of promise. We give our faith to both, and it's actually a very exhilarating thing to do. It used to when we would keep his word. It was just hard, difficult. Now it's become a joy. It's become life. The Bible says the God of all hope filleth you with all joy. Say all joy. And peace in believing. You can get to the point where there's all joy and there's peace. It doesn't mean you're not going to experience warfare. The enemy's active. He is super active. How many of you know the enemy's active right now? The thing is, if you're standing in the word of union, you're above him. If you're standing in the word of promise, you're keeping your belief sister, system above him. And if your belief system's above him, warfare will come. Warfare will be experienced, but it's not going to affect you like it would if you're in the middle of it. Amen. If you're in the middle of it, you're going to, you're going to experience arrows and spears and darts that you're not supposed to be experiencing. If you get above it, say above, it's not going to affect you. Amen. So Matthew 6, verse 22, uh, we're going to talk about this again. Say again. This is one of my favorite all times subjects right now because I'm understanding it in a way I've never understood it before. And to have true God kind of Abrahamic faith, you're going to have to get this part. You're going to have to become skilled at this part. 
It's a skillfulness. Some people think that just God, you just drop into things. God will only drop things down on you when you're a babe. You have to grow up in the kingdom. We have to grow. We have to learn. We have to develop. And there's skill sets that you grow and learn just like they're in the earth. There are skill sets that make you effective in the earth. There are skill sets that make you effective in the kingdom. One of the greatest skill sets you can ever, ever achieve is understanding the eye of the heart. Say the eye of the heart. All right, so the light of the body is the eye. Verse 22, if therefore thine eye, say thine eye, be single. Now he's talking about your inner eye of the heart here. He's not talking about this eye. Amen? He said, I be single. Your whole body, say whole body, will be full of light. There's not very many promises anywhere in the Bible that it tells you how to be full of light. But this is one. And he say whole body. That means spirit, soul, body, mind, will, emotions can be affected by this light. He's giving you a promise of how to walk in the light. He says if you walk in the light as he is in the light, the blood of Jesus will cleanse you from all sin. Amen. If you walk in the light, he said, follow with me will not walk in the darkness of the world, but he'll have what? The light of life. He'll literally lead you by this light. And without it, there are a lot of things you cannot encounter or experience in God. If you don't have this kind of light, you'll get convoluted. Thank you for that one. Amen. I appreciate you, Cody. You come sit in Pastor Chuck's seat for that. Praise God. Hallelujah. How many else wants to amen? <laughs> the whole body shall be full. Say full. Say full. If thine eye be evil. Don't give me that evil eye. So we have the eye, the single eye is made up of two words. One is alpha. Say alpha. That's alpha and omega. And the other one is Clayco, Placo, like interweave in a basket. Say interweave. And so if your eye is interwoven into Christ, the alpha, your whole body will be full of light. So it redefines what it means to abide. To abide is to have your eye of a heart owned by God. Listen, there is a worship that is done with a mouth. There is a worship that's done with a body, and there is a worship to God that is performed by the eye of the heart. It requires everything. It is the summation of the love of the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, body, and strength. Because to love God with the eye of your heart means it's going to have to be focused upon him, and it's going to have to remain focused. And I trust me in this. The enemy is going to do everything he can to offset the focus. He can't offset your salvation, but he can offset the focus. Because he offsets the focus. He offsets the primary leadership that Christ is orchestrating in your life. Well, the Lord's trying to lead you higher. He's trying to lead us into a place of graduation. He's trying to lead us into the high places so the things of this world will not affect us. So we'll not be moved by the ebb and flows of trial and tribulation that will be above only and not beneath. That is a covenant blessing of God to be above only. But to be above only, you'll have to learn to walk above only. You have to learn to live above only. It's not just say I'm above only and not beneath. Bless and highly favor of God. Head not tail, above only not beneath. But during the, during the week, you're not living above. We're living in the midst of it. And when you get down, we call it second heaven warfare. When you get down in the second war, heaven warfare, you cannot see clearly. You cannot discern clearly because the enemy convolutes the eye of the heart. But when you get it up there where it belongs, in the presence of the Lord and wrapped up, up into his grace and wrapped up into his light and wrapped up into his righteousness and wrapped up into his rest and wrapped up into life your body will be full of light your eye you'll have that sharp discernment say amen 
you'll have this sharpened sense of discernment. You'll have the edge on. It's like an athlete. They get their edge at what makes them who they are. You have athletes all over the world, but the ones that ascend to the top, they have an edge and they keep it. People don't know this about Tom Brady when he was so good. He'd start in the summertime. He'd forego his summers, even before summer, and him and his receivers would practice all summer long. He kept his edge. There's a reason why people excel in things. They get this edge. If we can excel in this one area, God himself will assure your victory. He'll assure your graduation. He'll assure you moving from glory to glory. He'll assure that you stay in light. He'll assure also that your faith in this life becomes effective. And that's what I want to talk to you about, how the eye of the heart becomes the eye of faith. Because what God wants to do first to train the eye of the heart to abide. Because if he can't get it to abide, he's not going to be able to introduce it to the eye of faith. See, if God can trust the eye of your heart to stay in him, he'll assign you something. He'll assign you something huge. He'll assign you something that's mountain moving, earth shattering. He'll assign something to you because he'll know you will be able to bring it to pass. Amen. He knows you'll stay with it. It's a different type of faith. Let me just say something about the Poneris side, then I'm going to get into the faith aspect of this. This is what God started introducing me to in a major way in this season, the eye of faith and understanding what Abrahamic faith is. I'm beginning to understand Abrahamic faith. I'm beginning to understand how they laughed at God when he was 99. He was, a, he was 99 and Sarah was 90, and God came to him and said, by this time next year, you'll have a son, and both of them fell over laughing. And this is the couple that God said against hope, believed in hope, staggered not the promise of God, strong in faith, giving glory to God, what he promised he would perform. They were laughing at God. They weren't laughing like one of those laughter services. They were laughing at the absurdity of that statement that God just told them. He told them you could have a son. This was our forefathers. Something they laid hold of that last year. They found something they had not found in the 24 year previous. And when you find this, it's going to give you faith, favor, and grace in the eye of God. There's something God is looking for on our behalf to graduate us. There is something God is looking for for our faith to become effective. I just didn't know what it was. I tried it for a long time, but I am landed in the zone. I'm like, oh. Oh, this is it. I didn't start seeing it until he started honing in the eye of the heart. He started circumcising it. Say circumcise. From the Poneris eye. The eye be evil, the Poneris, it does mean sin, but it also means toil, labor, hardship. Say hardship. Loyal, toil, labor, hardship, uh, harassment. How many of you ever been harassed? Raise your hand. If you've been harassed this year, raise your hand. If you were harassed last week, raise your hand. I mean, the stuff on and I go through now that we have come together, man, the enemy wants to fight that union, but we just keep accelerating and moving forward and overcoming. And we are both moving up into these realms with God and experiencing God. Neither one of us want to pray without each other. And it's like, we can't wait to see what God has. We're learning how to overcome. And we're learning how to keep that eye in his presence. And the first thing we do is say, Father, circumcise. We present it to the Lord say, Lord, circumcise the eye of my heart. Circumcise it from the Poneris eye of distraction, hardship, toil, labor. Circumcise it from darkness. Say, circumcise it from harassment. All of those things that come along. They come into your life. You ever wonder why you can be doing so good? You'll come out of a conference just so full of God. Why? Because God flushed you. He lifted you. You come out. You feel like a lion or a lioness. You come out of that conference. And, man, for the, that three or four days, man, nothing touched you. And then about two weeks later, you're back into the mold. 
You don't realize if there are spiritual forces around you that are attempting to mold your life because that's what their job is to do, to ever keep you from graduating. And when you are starting to move towards graduation, you'll start experiencing more and more of this harassing warfare to try to keep you out. And if you don't know what to do during that time, then what will happen is your eye will get convoluted. And when it gets convoluted, you'll start being tossed and turned. One day you're here, one day you're here, one day you're here, and one day you're just hoping God will do something. One day you're just wondering if God will do something. But you're not fixed into a place where you know that you know that you know he's going to do it. But when you can get it fixed into that place, there is a place, trust me. If you don't believe me, ask Anna. There is a place of immovability. That you cannot be moved any longer. That there's no trial. There's no circumstance. There's no words. There's nothing that can move you from that position. The only thing that can move you is yourself. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Cody, where's my amens? Moving back. Somebody else. Praise God. But he sees your eye, be the poneris eye, your, your, your whole body will be filled with the darkness. But sometimes we don't know it and see it as darkness. Sometimes it's just familiarity. Sometimes it's just frustration or cloudiness. I remember someone uh, spent some time in my prayer closet once, and they sat out of my prayer closet. And I didn't think anything about it, and I went to pray the next time, and all of a sudden, I'm not in my, I know that I have this vision I get in there. I get in this eye thing going, I can see. I don't see with these eyes. I see with the eye of the heart. And everything was cloudy. It's just constant. Everything got cloudy. And I'm like, what's going on? And I'm thinking, man, I'm exceptionally, uh, if you've sat in my chair, I'm probably not talking about you. So don't be thinking about that. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I'm, I'm I can't get my bearings. I'm like, what's going on? I'm picking up the cloudiness that was in that person. I started picking their cloudiness up. I'm like, oh, that's not mine. But I, I was picking up because I had sat in my seat and, and I started picking up their stuff. And, and I had to get that out. And then I got back my vision restored. I could see again. Your vision, you can write this down, is everything. Your vision is everything. You must learn to protect it. Amen. We protect it by what Tina was speaking of this morning, by abiding. We protect it by keeping his word, hearing, receiving, understanding, and keeping it. What is going to anchor you ultimately? Listen to me on this. Ultimately, the bigger the calling the greater accountability, the more God requires of your faith. Amen? We are called in this house to birth something very, very important for the last days. We have been called for a long time. We have laid the groundwork and the foundation of it. We come up with jewels. Here's another jewel, but it was still foundation building. Now God's culminating everything into a true birth. And to do that, there has to be a true faith, a true faith, a faith that cannot be moved. So I want to go to the Hall of Fame chapter for a minute of faith of Hebrews chapter 11. I want to show you how the eye of the heart turns into the eye of faith and what happens in the eye of faith because I'm beginning to experience this. And then by revelation and by two encounters, I've understood the next level. And it's awesome. Say awesome. Look at your neighbor and say awesome. It's, you know, really our, one of our primary offices here, I know we talk about the apostolic, one of our primary offices truly is the office of intercession here. It's just a different order of intercession now. 
And to learn how to do it this way, there's a lot of intercessors that prayed up in here that could never make that transition over. They learned it a certain way, and they couldn't do it the next way. But God is teaching us how to sit with him in the right hand of God and how to make intercession for very large things in every part of this this organism called the father's house is an intricate part of bringing forth a birth that's going to transform nations it's going to transform nations what's about to come out of this house is going to transform nations it's not going to be about a person it's about what god has been breeding in here what he's been birthing and planting it's coming to fullness now for 16 months now, bar one month, 16 months, we have been standing in the Jordan, immovable, to immovable, in a state of faith, maybe have missed, took a month off, but after that, maybe a missed 10 days out of 16 months. Say 16 months. And every day, say every day, is glorious. Every day we come out of there. Sometimes we'll go in there with intense warfare and we come out and we're looking at each other and going, wow, that was awesome. We learn how to shift our trials. We learn how to bury the old man, elevate the new man, and bring all of that into the Jordan and stand upon the foundation stones that God brought us here. And little did we know the whole time he was building that foundation, every one of those little revelations from the lily's grace to the tree of life, to spiritual constitution, to the corporate eyewitness, to the understanding of the crown, to the throne of grace, to the baptism of his death. Mm, got a lot of amens on that one. Every one of those foundation stones was a component that allows us to stand there effectively for God. It's amazing. Just amazing. I'm like, Lord, I'm so glad for every one of them because every one of them is utilized in any given week. Every one of those foundations. It's a faith. How many of you have a promise right now unfulfilled? Raise your hand. How many of you want to see it fulfilled? How many have been waiting a long time? How many of you experienced deferred hope? How many of you in the deferred hope got discouraged? You cannot, you can write this down, birth the kingdom of God in a state of deferred hope. Doesn't mean your promise has gone away. You just can't birth in that season of deferred hope. You're going to have to turn the deferred hope. It's got to be shifted. The discouragement has to be shifted. And you have to move back into the prime breeding ground of life. Rest, joy, peace, love. All of these things have to be present for the birthing. That's why the word of union is so glorious. Am I with, are you with me? Or am I just, I'm out in, okay. Hebrews 11. Oh, when you keep it though, it's a joy. It's a joy. I never one of these apostles to go through so much and all they're talking about is joy and peace and grace being multiplied. I'm like, how did they say that? Because they didn't live here. They lived with God. All their persecutions drove them into God. Sometime in a nation like this, we're not persecution. It's not driving us into God. Sometimes we have to drive in by faith and by hunger alone. We can't just serve God every time something goes wrong. We run to him and then move back away from him when it's all good again. That's what this nation does. Everything goes wrong. They all run to the church. And then when, when it's all back again, they come back out. Listen, this hour today where these viruses and things, it's not to be afraid of, but you have to keep yourself. On and I keep ourselves in the tree of life every single day. We keep ourselves in the leaves of the tree, the medicine of the nations. We're applying that medicine from Christ himself every single day. We apply our forehead. Praise God. We're going to walk in here one day. We're going to be 30 years old. You're going to look at it like, what happened to you? Faith happened to us because we're be believing for the Abrahamic Sarah blessing. How many of you have ever heard us taught on that? We believe for that every day. He reneweth our youth like the eagle. We are finding fun. Faith is fun. Say, faith is fun. It's not fun. 
If the Ponaris eye is active, it's only fun when the Placo eye, Alpha Placo eye, because you're in the light now. You're in the joy. He's filling you with all joy and peace and believing. He said, the God of hope filleth you with all joy. We stagger not at the promise of God, strong in faith. See, faith is a strength when you're in him. You cannot have strong faith without being in the presence of God. He is the one that fuels it. He is the one that creates the atmosphere. It's the atmosphere of your heart is what God's looking for. Your heart is breeding an atmosphere of depression, discouragement, or it's breeding an atmosphere of, of peace, of joy, of strength, an atmosphere of promise. How many of you are walking around with an atmosphere of promise? Where the promise is in you and you got the atmosphere of it. You got the edge. Oh, you got the edge, baby. You got to have the edge. We can't afford to be checked out in this hour right now. Especially knowing that we are carrying the answer. In seed form, but boy, is it coming forth. All right. And I got to, I'm preaching too much now. Okay. I'm making up for lost time. Hebrew, Hebrews 11.1. One. Ready? Read. How many of you ever been in church? Ready? Read. Ready? Read. Now I'm messing. Praise God. So now faith is the substance. Oh, substance things hope for, evidence things not seen. Do you know what that substance is? Do you know what that evidence is? By it, the elders obtained a good report through faith. Say through faith. We understand that the worlds, that is the conception of the universe and the generations. Say the generations because he lists all the generations that were affected by faith. Were framed, set in order, manifested. By what? The word of God. The power trends. Faith in the word. So that the things that are seen were not made by things that do appear. They were not made by the things that are visible. Now watch this. The things that are seen in any generation, even the conception of the world, were not made by that which is visible. Meaning this, you cannot birth the kingdom of God with something you're seeing out here. You can't grab this and say, ooh, there's the kingdom. It's got to come from an invisible realm. Say, I'm not moved by what I see, feel, or hear, but I'm only moved by the word of God. No, that is a type of faith, but I am incredibly moved by what I see feel and hear I'm not talking about circumstance I move by those two if I'm not in position but I moved by what I see from his word what I feel from union with him and what I hear from him I am moved by an atmosphere that is forged through a union with him that the eye of faith God did not ask us to go blindly ministrate faith without seeing, feeling, or hear like we have this blank wall, just speak to it and not feel anything. That is not the kind of faith that God is, is developing now. God is developing an inner sanctum of faith, faith from the heart. It's not an empty faith that's just generated by words. He brings words in there, eternal words, and they light the eye. Say they light the eye. And if you keep those words that he gave you and you make them more important than anything else in your life, if you make the word of union and the word of promise more important, what happens by keeping those words, it begins to generate light. It generates an atmosphere within you. It generates image within you. It generates strength and power in you. And you keep it through a process of what we have learned and defined as the keeping of his word. 
word, every day holding it, every day keeping it, every day treasuring it, every day keeping the heart and not allowing the heart to be convoluted. It's taken a very long time to get here because the enemy is so skilled at what he does. And to learn how to keep him out of the garden. Do you know what God's asking us to do right now? No different than Adam and Eve. Keep the garden. Tend to it. Don't eat from that tree there. Did you have to put that tree right in the middle of the garden? Yes. Otherwise, it wouldn't be anything to overcome. That tree constantly trying to pull you to itself. Isn't that amazing? We have all this other stuff to eat from it. That other one just keeps pulling. It pulls the old man while God's pulling the new. But God's saying, tend this garden, tend this kingdom, tend the garden of the kingdom of God within you. Keep it. Dress it. Say, keep it. Woo. How long has it been since we've weeded our garden? Come in there. I'm all, I need some help. Bring the weed eater. That mower is not big enough. <laughs> we have to keep it. Why? From out of your garden is going to flow. Some of the kingdom of God is within me. Wherever I go, manifest the kingdom. Well, what's in the kingdom? What's in your garden? What's coming out? What's been planted? What's been nurtured? What's been kept? What's looking at the bigger the assignment, which is a pretty big assignment, which God's given us. We can't get away from it. It's the way it is. We got to get over it. No more tissue for the issue. No more self-pity. We have to move on. Amen. Man, when God, how many of you got to know when God said something in your heart? He just, how many of you, I, I just want to know, seriously, don't raise your hand if it doesn't apply to you. How many of does the kingdom of God just gnaw on you all the time? just never stops just constantly up in there just leave me alone <laughs> would you please just leave me alone? i told Anna, i said do you have any idea this never ever ever leaves me i can't run from it it's worse if i run from it if i run from it, the enemy will just just slap me down and just just commence to open up a can on me He'll just keep kicking, keep kicking, and keep kicking and keep it. I mean, remember in the years of self pity, I just think God he ain't never might you ever gonna do anything because you'll get up. <laughs> but I have you, you're gonna have to learn to stand. Say now, faith is what? Substance. Do you know by keeping this, there is a tangible spiritual substance coming out from the promise of his word that fills the garden of your heart on a daily basis. It's literal substance that you hold. And it's evidence. Can't see it with a natural eye. Can't see it with the natural senses. Can't discern it. Nobody else can see it because it's not manifested. Do you realize the kind of calling God gave us here? To go up the mountain, God, and believe for a crown that, that you cannot see, that nobody's functioning in it, probably nobody's preaching it, and give birth to it. Year after year after year after year, believing for the manifestation, this is our year, this is our year, this is our year, this is our year, so we don't even say it's our year anymore. Do you, know, do you realize how much easier it would have been just to plug into something already was? And to see fruit, and everybody, where's the fruit of it? I mean, it's right here. It's right here. I'm like, God, what does it take to bring it from here to here? He said, faith. I'm like, okay. He, yes, I understand. He goes, substance, evidence. Are you all ready for this? Incense. I'm like, what? Say that again. He says, do you understand what that substance is on the inside of you? Do you understand what that evidence is on the inside of you? It's the sum total of all your plantings, of all your prayers, of everything you ever went through, of every battle that you overcame, of every warfare that, you, that knocked you down and you got back up. 
Of every time you chose me above the enemy. Of every time you chose to serve me, to believe, to hold my promise. When you did it, when you didn't feel like it. When you did it, when there was no light. When you did it from the wilderness reproach and the reproach of Egypt. Through betrayals and all manner of darkness through your own stumblings and all your failures and still there's something there now. He goes, that substance was born out of a lifetime of following me. It wasn't some arbitrary thing that showed up in your heart. That evidence was born and birthed and grew up into your garden where you see my promise above everything else now. Where you see my promise, you feel the substance and the weightiness of it, though it's not seen by man and though you have not personally seen the fruit of it. You're carrying the evidence and you're carrying the substance. And everyone like you are doing the same. That is the precious. That is what the father said, without faith, it's impossible to please him. It's not just waking up and saying, without faith, I can't please you today. It was the sum total of what was grown up in your garden, of what you overcame, of what's come out from your life. Working in invisible faith, carrying that which is invisible, but it's no more invisible to you. It's evidence now. It's reached the visibility of your heart. The eye of the heart is turned into the eye of faith, and it sees the promise. Though I, nothing out here yet, inside, oh, it's full. It's full of substance. It's full of evidence. It's, it's beyond imagery. It's reality within. When you walk around, you know it's going to happen. When you walk around, here's another thing. You stopped eating from the other tree. Amen. You stopped looking for the other tree. It's just like Abraham. Well, let's just use Eleazar. Let's use Ishmael because that's what you do when faith is growing and you don't have enough substance and evidence to believe that God can actually do the impossible. You go and try to help him out from the other tree. We'll come and say, let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. It's coming this way. And what happened? He, he diverts your heart to look to some worldly event. Say, this is how the crown will come out. I'm sure it's going to come out. And what happens, you're waiting for the next intel report. Am I talking to anybody? And those men that you're looking from that intel report are under the same system you're under. And you get locked and loaded, say locked and loaded. And when you keep it, it comes to a fruition. He's, and this is what the Lord said to me. He said that substance and that evidence that's come up is an incense because it is your life's journey that's sitting in your heart right now. It's the summation of everything you've ever went through, everything you've ever done. Is it full of bitterness? Is it full of discouragement? Is that the sum total? I want you to close your eyes a minute. I want you to look at your heart. I don't want you to look at your heart right now. If you're going through something, I just want you to look at the general. I want you to look at the general condition of your heart. What's inside? What's working there? After all the years of walking with God, what's up inside of you? What is there? Hurt, wound, bitterness? Is there joy? Is there purpose? Is there expectation? Is it full? Is it wanting? Where is your heart after all the trials you've been through? And if you're everything you've walked through in all the years, what's that condition? When that arena becomes full of light, full of substance, and full of evidence, and that evidence within is far superior than anything the world Nothing can take it from you. Nothing can beat it out of you. Nothing can drive it out of you. It simply season after sin is growing up. And the Lord said, that right there is what I create from. 
I create from what's coming out of your garden. It's the creative atmosphere that I utilize to create in the earth. And from that creative realm, God will take those invisible things that have been made visible to you by faith. And he brings that creative realm of glory and that creative realm out of your heart. And he manifests it. He'll manifest it to your family. He's going to manifest to your generation. He's going to manifest right inside this church. He's going to manifest to this nation. Whew. That's why he said, he that cometh to God, you must believe he's going to do this. If you're going to make the journey with him, you've got to believe he is a rewarder and you're going to come out on the other side. Everybody say he's a rewarder. He's a rewarder. When we were caught up in the right hand the other day in the throne in the Jordan. It's what we do. It's our life. Praise God. And the father said, now give me that substance. Offer it up to me. He was making me known by revelation what was there. He goes, your heart is the summation of your walk with me. Everything stored there. Your victories are stored up in there. Your faith is stored up in there. Your hurt, your pain and travail will get cut away from it. If you allow too much of that to get stored up in there, it convolutes the operation. The Lord's constantly cutting away, but he's filling it with himself and filling it with his purpose and filling it with his glory for that final. And this is what Abraham and Sarah found. Where they came to the place, they staggered no more at the promise of God. Against hope, say against hope. They believed in hope. They, do you understand what God asked them to do? He commanded Abraham to give birth out of a dead womb. His body was dead. Her womb was dead. Nobody's ever done this before. He had no Abraham to read about. And God said, give birth. Okay, Hagar, come on. Not that kind. Sarah, give birth out of Sarah. God, could you imagine the conversations? Abraham, the whole human race is hanging on this. No pressure. Because you can't give birth out of a dead womb. I can't bring my son out of the dead womb of humanity. So I need this from you. He did it. He did it. He graduated. The day came, and they gave the birth, the promise. As soon as he did that, God set in motion his plan to bring forth the Christ out of the dead womb. He had to stare death in the face and call things that be not as though they were. We have this new covenant inheritance where when you pray, you enter into the sanctuary of God and you shut the door and you go before the Father and you, you unload the old man. You're not going to be effective in faith. You unload and you reload the new man up. You load him up in rest. You load him up in life. You load him up in love. You load him up in glory. And then you go down there and exercise faith with your heart full and there's evidence in the substance. And the God says, now, bring that to me. Bring what? Bring your life journey, the substance of your heart. Bring it to me. It's the highest level of worship. Bring that evidence. It's the highest level. It's born out of the eye that's been owned by God now. That's what the Lord spoke to me. We literally got caught up in it one day. On and I got caught up in the incense of God. It became incense. He said that incense is more precious to heaven because that incense and the incense, watch this, that's caught in the bowls of Revelation chapter 5 of the prayers of the saints of this last hour, that incense will be like no other incense. Because it is the precious oil of the saints. Prayers that have ascended up. Listen, watch your going through matters to God. He loves you. He'll rescue you. But what he wants from you is he wants you to overcome. 
And he's going to stay with you until you overcome. He's going to stay with you. Men might not stay with you, but God will stay with you through everything. And you cleave to him. He's going to strengthen you and strengthen you. He's going to make you whole. and He's going to heal your heart. He's going to set up residence within you. And then he's going to bring something out of your heart that's going to transform nations. And you have to hold that when you don't see anything. And you have to keep that before him to the day it breaks loose. When it breaks loose, everybody will want you got. They'll want it. And you'll be able to freely give it. Out from your belly will flow everything you planted. That's what we have been. But what we're going to be now is that birthing church. Amen. Listen, there was a lot of miscarriages along the way. But now we're learning how to keep it. I'm like, what is going on here? And I'll close with this. I said, Lord, what is going on? Every time I come up in this Jordan, I feel this strength. I feel this faith. It's solid. It's consistent. It doesn't move. It's strong. It's always there. It's, we arrive at the same place every day. Every day we're arriving into the same level of faith, the same level of glory. He says, this is the Abrahamic faith. This is substance and it's evidence now. The substance is the strength and the might of heaven that's come out from that. And the evidence is the light and the imagery and the glory of what God called you to do in the earth. And it lives in you. And he said, that is what I'm going to bring out into the earth. Right now, it's incense. Listen, that is a level of worship. I pray, bring your heart to God and release what's in it to him. If it's full of the wrong stuff, get it in the presence of your high priest and let him cut out what's wrong and then bring it because that is more precious to the Father than anything else. Wow. You get one chance to do it right. Amen. To bring it to him. There's incense coming out from this house, from the labors of this house. Listen, you, you wouldn't stay here if you didn't believe. Amen? I mean, we're the first church of the taco stand. I mean, come on. Commit to keep your heart in him, before him. Understand that place where he can cut away the old and infuse the new. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll pull you out of anything. And he'll set your feet on a rock. And then he'll establish your goings. But most of all, he's going to teach us how to function and operate from the high places now. It's not enough to get up there. You have to stay there. He's teaching us how to stay there. Amen. Let's give him glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father.